All right, we're back. My name is Jesse, and today we're going to be going over the transfer switch. Um, in a prior video, it was about if I were to install my solar system again, what would I do different? And one of the things that I would do different is the I would have installed a 100 amp transfer switch. And so in that video, I had a viewer, I think his name is Steph Wiz. I'll try and put a screenshot of the handle. Um, but he was asking just further explanation on the transfer switch. And it's actually a really good question because it, for some reason, I couldn't wrap my head around it when I was first doing the research on, you know, solar and how I could, you know, integrate it into my house. Um, but as I kept reading, like it wasn't really necessary. It's more of a, like a convenience to have. But once I realized it wasn't necessary, I kind of disregarded the transfer switch, but, um, or I disregarded learning more about it. But now that I've installed it and I, you know, I've done more research on uh, the transfer switch, I wish I would have, you know, spent the time to kind of learn more about it and integrate it because it's a really nice feature to have. And so today we're just going to kind of go over the wiring, the mechanisms of what's happening, and hopefully uh, kind of just drive the point home of, you know, the importance um, of the, the transfer switch. Um, and we'll do a kind of whiteboard illustration, kind of diagram. And then I brought the 6000 XP out. Uh, we'll kind of do more of like a hands-on um, demonstration to kind of just further tie everything together. So uh, hopefully it kind of clears up some confusion. I know for me it was kind of, I don't know why it, it was hard to um, kind of wrap my head around it, but once I kind of drew it out and diagram exactly what's going on it made sense and it's not that hard to kind of incorporate into your system it doesn't it's not it doesn't cost that much more money either but it's a, it's a nice kind of insurance and backup to have and so if you're unfamiliar like you know why, why would i even need a transfer switch um, in my solar kind of system and integration to the house um, if your uh, inverter fails um, and you don't have a transfer switch um, the lights um, in your house are going to turn off or at least the the critical loads panel that is being powered by the uh, inverter. Um, if the inverter fails, everything inside that panel is going to um, kind of go offline. You're not going to have any power there um, until you get the inverter fixed. Uh, we did in a prior video talk about some workarounds and you know what you could do. Um, if you, I'll, I'll leave a link to the video um, where we kind of discuss the workarounds. But the best way to do it and not have to worry about any workarounds is the transfer switch. So let's get into the diagram and. All right, try and zoom in here real quick and just do a real quick, simple kind of walkthrough explanation of the wiring and kind of the mechanisms of what's going on. But before I do that, I'll just mention real quick that this transfer switch here, I'm using it for like solar uh, as as far as like integrating solar into uh, kind of this transfer switch. But these are used uh, a lot for generators. So the generator, instead of the inverter, the generator would be here. You know, the wiring would rem remain the same. But I just put 12,000 XP here because that's the example. That's what I have. So we're just going to stick with that. But this is our inverter here. And this inverter is powering our critical loads panel. This is our critical loads panel that has a bunch of circuits here that we moved from our main service panel. So our inverter is powering our critical loads panel. And this is our transfer switch here. And our transfer switch, um, the, the key things I'm gonna focus on are these six lugs here. And these lugs are, are carrying kind of the current carrying conductors. They this is where all the current carrying conductors are going to kind of secure to you is these big lugs. But within this transfer switch, there's usually going to be a ground bar and a neutral bar of some sort. Um, and so I just drew um, the current carrying conductors, but there's also going to be a ground and a neutral from your main service panel. It'll land in here and then there'll be a ground and neutral that'll come off of this 12,000 XP and it'll land in here. And then there'll be a ground and neutral coming from our critical loads panel that'll land, land in here. But just so it's not so messy, um, I have just the current carrying conductors. And so in the simplest form, all this transfer switch is doing is determining which of these power sources, either the grid or solar, is going to power your critical load panel. Um, and so the way it does that is with these kind of metal plates. And I'm going to put a picture within this video to kind of, I just don't have a transfer switch where I would show you, you know, visually with it, but I just don't have one. But I found a bunch of good pictures online and, you know, I'll, I'll put those pics within this video. But essentially inside the transfer switch, you have these metal L shaped brackets and these, you have two of these, you have two of these metal L shaped brackets and one of them is here and the other one is like right here. And so all these L shaped brackets are doing, oh, these L shaped brackets are also like kind of attached through like a metal rod to like a handle. And so as soon as you grab the handle, it's going to turn your, your brackets within this transfer switch. That's kind of the mechanism of what's happening. So these metal plates here are inside this transfer switch. And in this kind of up position like this, this bracket here is kind of connected to this lug here. And this uh, kind of vertical bracket is connected to this lug here. So all these, this uh, L bracket kind of plate is doing 
is connecting this conductor to this conductor. And so there's another one of these over here and all it's doing is connecting uh, this conductor to this conductor. And so when your, when your transfer switch is in the up position, it's gonna connect these two conductors here together. And so that means the solar is gonna pass through these wires, it's gonna pass through this metal plate and it'll come into these lugs and these lugs have a wire and now these lugs or these wires land into this uh, critical load panel. However, if your inverter up here fails, well, now you don't have electricity coming to this critical loads panel, but this is where the transfer switch comes in handy. You're gonna pull this lever down. These metal plates are gonna mechanically come down. And this bottom plate here is always attached to the, to the critical loads panel. And so the only thing that's gonna happen is now, instead of this metal plate here being attached to the lugs on the, to the 12,000 XP, it's gonna switch. And now this plate here is gonna land on these bottom lugs and these bottom lugs are attached to our main service panel. And so now we've disconnected off of the inverter and now these two conductors are connected to these two conductors through this metal plate. So you've pulled the transfer switch from this up position to this down position. We've disconnected off of the inverter and now we're connecting this conductor to this conductor, this conductor to this conductor. And so now the grid is gonna be supplying electricity through those wires, through this metal plate into this critical load panel. And so that means that with the flick of a switch, you're able to disconnect from the inverter, repair it, buy another one, replace it. Um, but in the meantime, you still have electricity uh, because you have this transfer switch. We talked about the workarounds that you can do if you don't have this, but with you know one flick of the switch, you're back online. Um, your critical loads panel um, is not offline for very long at all, literally a second, and then you're your house, your lights, your refrigerator, everything is back to working. You're pulling, you're just buying electricity from the grid until you're, until you fix your inverter. And so that's kind of the quick rundown here of, you know, the mechanisms of kind of what's going on. And as soon as your inverter, as soon as you buy another one, repair it and kind of replace it, um, you just literally pull the switch from the down position to the up position. And now you've disconnected from the grid. You're no longer going to be buying electricity to supply your critical loads panel, you're back to using your solar um, and your inverter. And so that's the kind of, the nice benefit of having a transfer switch is it's, it's a one second throw of this transfer switch and it allows you to choose between buying electricity from the grid or using your solar or generator. And so hopefully that makes a kind of more sense. And this is kind of just a little whiteboard demonstration, but uh, we'll kind of do just a quick walkthrough with uh, like the 6000 XP and more of a hands-on demonstration. All right, so now we'll just kind of quickly walk through like more real kind of components that you're going to be working with, the real materials. Um, this is leftover two gauge um, service wire from my 12000 XP install, but we're just going to kind of go with this as our four wires that we're going to be hooking up into our transfer switch. And so the first thing we're going to hook up, they don't necessarily have to be in this order, but this, this is just the way I'm going to kind of walk through this. We're going to connect the grid, the critical loads panel, and then we're going to connect our inverter to the transfer switch. So first thing we're going to connect is um, the ground, the neutral, and our two carry current carrying conductors, L1 and L2. So our neutral and our ground are going to connect into our main service panel. So our ground is going to connect to our ground bar up here. Our neutral is going to connect to our neutral bar up here. And then our L1 and L2 are going to connect into a 100 amp breaker inside the main electrical panel. So L1 and L2 are going to connect to a 100 amp breaker in the main electrical panel. Now these four wires are going to um, run through some sort of conduit all the way to our transfer switch. And the neutral and the ground are going to connect, you know, somewhere inside this transfer switch. And then L1 and L2 are going to connect to these lugs here on the transfer switch. And so that's kind of our four wires that we're going to connect from the main service panel to our transfer switch. So next we're going to move on to the critical loads panel and we're going to use the same wires. We're going to use neutral ground and then these two current carrying conductors. And so we'll connect L1 and L2 into our lugs here. The neutral ground will be connected somewhere on a ground bar, neutral bar in here. And then we're going to carry these four wires through some sort of conduit and it's going to land into our critical loads panel. And L1 is going to connect here into this lug, L2 here into this lug. And then our neutral and ground, our ground will connect here. And then our neutral will connect right here. 
And so that's the wiring that's going to take place between the transfer switch and our critical loads panel. Lastly, we need to hook up our inverter. And so we're going to hook up the same four wires, neutral ground, L1, L2, and they're going to be L1 and L2 are going to land on the top lugs here. And then our neutral and ground will land somewhere in there. And then those four wires are going to be kind of ran through some sort of conduit. And they're going to land on your inverter, wherever that's at. And so your ground is going to land on the 12,000 XP. It's this ground bar right here. And then our neutral lands on this neutral bar over here. And then L1 and L2 are going to land on our load output, which is this breaker right here. So L1, L2 land on the breaker. Neutral lands on this neutral bar. And then the ground lands over here on this ground bar. And that's essentially the wiring from the transfer switch to the, to the inverter. So that's kind of the, you know, more like live component, you know, walkthrough. Uh, hopefully that made sense. If you guys have any questions, you know, anything to add on, make sure to put it in the comments. We'll kind of go over it. Um, that's just, you know, a way to do it. I'm sure there's plenty of ways um, you can go about this, but that's kind of a very simple, basic way to kind of think about the transfer switch, the wiring, the mechanisms of what kind of what's going on there. I will right, we'll catch you guys on the next one.